welcome to another video everybody this is me just finishing work 20 to 7 at night and it's a thursday night but it's my long weekend and there's a plan that has been hatched and what it is i'm going to go down tonight i'm going to drive down to the brecon beacons and there's a 48 mile uh, route which i want to go and do so i'm now going to take this heap back to the delivery office i'm going to get in my car i'm going to drive down to brecon beacons i'm hoping to get there for about midnight i'm going to camp in the woods near penny fan where i camped a few months ago and then from there i'm going to wake up tomorrow morning the forecast for this weekend is wonderful so the plan is get straight on the trail tomorrow and i'm doing a 48 mile uh, hike over three days probably um we'll see how it goes Good morning, troops. Well, I'm here. I'm ready. Got here last night. I was set up and in my tent for quarter to midnight, which is better than I thought. Quite a challenging drive down, actually, at dark. But it was um, all worth it because I'm here now. You know, the decision was either set out this morning and do the drive in the daytime, but only get on the trail late or just do that drive and it was all right actually so i'm now about 10 minute walk away from the trail from the start of it just made my first brew of the day and um i'll be heading off once i've drunk that right i've clambered out my pit there you are i'm back in that old spot where i camped last time headed straight for this last night Good job there was no one here because I really didn't have a backup plan. Um, but yeah, I mean, I didn't think there would be on a Thursday night. So, yeah, it's cold, chilly today, but I'll soon warm up. Uh, and, you know, I'll probably do about 15 miles today. Like I said, it's a, it's a 48 mile route. Um, I'm going to do it over like three days Friday, Saturday, Sunday, possibly drive back Sunday night. Um, that's going up to Penny Fan behind, but you can't see it up that way. But yeah, but it's not going to be a you know a head down, I mean, ass up bloody experiment. I want to just chill out with this, you know, take me time, relax, enjoy. It doesn't have to be constantly going and going and going. You know, getting older, I need to start just chilling out a bit, enjoying it. Doesn't have to be a blooming a race. Right, pack this tent away, leave no trace as always, and uh, I'll get on that trail. Right, catch you in a bit. There you go, as always, leave no trace. I'll just show you my new rucksack anyway. This is the Osprey Kestrel 48 litre rucksack um, because. In one of my previous videos, I mentioned that my army Bergen weighed an absolute ton and it was becoming a burden carrying it up and down mountains. And this is a lot lighter. But, as you can see, you can't get everything in it. I mean, my tent and my sleeping mat have to go on the outside. I mean, literally inside is literally dry clothes and my sleeping bag. And that's pretty much it. Um, so there's no luxuries, there's no camping chairs, there's no furry lights, there's no stuff like that. <laughs> so we'll see how, how that fur's on its first proper expedition. Okay, just started on the trail. Just got to my car then to just uh, pick, up, pick a pie up which I'd left in there from last night. And my boot was open and in the dark I'd left my boot open. It's a good job it's not the kind of card anyone would want to steal. That's the uh, the woods I slept in last night. My car's just down there. Across the road is the Stovey Arms and the path going up to Penny Fan. The start of the fan dance on SES Selection. That's where I went up a few months ago. I'll actually be coming down that way. But the start of the trail is across the road from that. And I'm heading up this way and I'm going to traverse along the tops of all that. And then I'm going to swing behind it, all the way behind it, 
and then I come out basically opposite that hill over there and then I'm going beyond there to Tallybont Reservoir and beyond so it's 48 mile we'll see how we get on um, it's a good little gauge this for me to just you know see where I'm at fitness wise carrying gear again you know what I mean and lighter gear this time like I said I'm not going to kill myself uh, there is opt out along the way where if my feet are killing me or I've had enough I can cut it shorter but we'll see how we get on I'm just going to enjoy it take it in weather's fine perfect weather conditions not too hot not too cold so yeah let's crack on Samantha Peterson Samantha Peterson Samantha Peterson Well I've made it to the top of my first checkpoint Fan Freinich I think it's pronounced It's basically west of Penny Fan which is over there Gorgeous so it's, it's just opened up up here uh, I'll, I'll move the camera around let you have a, have a look at the vista of which I am appreciating now yeah, so it's well opened up. Boo! I'll tell you what, though. I've been looking north there. That's where I would have drove through last night. And uh, it's stunning. This is kind of the direction I'm going next. I'm not going up that big mountain, though. I'm kind of swinging right round here. And then I'll be heading over that direction to Tallybont. Penny fans over there, straight opposite me. But you know what? It's a constant procession of people going up Penny Fan. And there's absolutely no one on this side of the A470. I've not seen one person since I've been since I set off. Bless. Absolute bliss. And the rucksack is uh, a great success so far. It's not really been an issue, it's just like having a day sack. This is exactly why I brought the pipe while camping. Because it makes me stop. Instead of just tabbing, flipping non-stop, it makes you stop and just take it in. Because it's a long process between packing your pipe and then getting it going. But found this great little spot right by a river, little bridge behind me. So I thought, right, Brett Clement is coming out, and I'm gonna just. I've took my socks and shoes off, I'm doing a bit of grounding, I might put my feet in the water. Just been speaking to a lovely bloke about half an hour ago called Andy. He's been wild camping on his own, and you know what? You know, most of the time in life, I fail to fit into my society where I live. Bring me out here, and you guarantee I'll be... The people I will talk to are probably the people who are more likely to be on my wavelength. And I was talking to him for about 45 minutes. In fact, we had to prize each other away from each other, because we just kept wanting to talk. But, you know, it's mad when you get out into... Like, for me, this is my environment, so when I bump into people who also have this as their environment, we have a lot in common, we have a lot to talk about. We talk about Sasquatch and all kinds. Telling them about Stu, my mate, and James going to Canada. And then UFOs and everything. Oh, it's wonderful. So, yeah, I'm going to chill out here for half an hour, take some water on, and then uh, I'll crack on. Been going about four hours so far. Right, I've got my first dilemma of the expedition. My route's bringing me down here now. Now, basically, the route is taking me all the way up to the top of that hill and then all the way down to join a wood over there. Or there's a footpath that just goes straight down to the wood and cuts out that big hill. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the footpath because you know what? It's only a template that, my 48 mile thing. You know, and it's, it's quite, 
It's quite hard work carrying this rucksack. I was also at point of dragging up myself all the way up that hill that I'm looking at. Just so I can uh, just come down it again. And then carry on that way. So I can just cut across and cut that hill out. Do you know what? At one time, I would be that mission focused that I would never deviate off a plan. But like I said, these are, these are just templates for me. And you've got to use your head. You know, I'm carrying about bloody... 40 pound here on me back. I don't need to be dragging it up there for no reason. So that's what I'm doing. So sorry. Can't advertise it as a 48 mile an hour. It'll probably be more like 45 or 6 mile. But who cares? Who cares? Right, it's quarter past six on the second night. And, uh, you know, I was kind of um and ahhing about whether to camp on top of that tonight because I've been coming down this path but in order to get up there I've got to go down here swing right round to the right for about a mile and then come back on myself and then climb up to the top of that and the wind's picking up a bit I've come down this muddy track here and I've been looking for a little place to tuck in and I found one I always find something me always it's not, it's not far off this little track, but no one's coming down here. You know, to be honest, I don't even know if it's a, if it's a proper footpath, that. Looks like the odd quad bike has come down now and again. But yeah, I'm tucking myself in here tonight. You know, some set up, little brew uh, shelf. I'll be in there, it's flatter than last night, and all I was been sliding all over the place last night. You know, and I could really, if I wanted, have a little fire tonight. I mean, there's no one around. I'm, I'm on top of a hill here in this forest. You know, I could get down here and get a little fire going. But uh, but anyway, there's been a change of plan from the original plan. But I'm going to make a brew, pack me pipe, and I'll tell you more about it. Right. Going to have a little... Uh, ramble while I'm waiting for it to go dark. I've just made a, a nice coffee and I've got whiskey in it. A nice little Irish one. And I've got Brett on the go. Just waiting for nightfall. But you know like I said there's been a change of plan. And um you know the change of plans come about because I've had a great day today. I've absolutely loved it. And I was thinking, what has made it wonderful? And it wasn't getting miles under my belt. And it wasn't pushing myself up bills. It was the little things in life. Like the interaction I had with that lad, Andy. You know, and I'm talking to him. And part of my brain was thinking, like, end this conversation now. Because, come on, you've got to, you've got to get going. And then part of my brain was saying, no, this is what's important. It's these moments and these memories. You don't have to be so obsessed with having a task and getting it done. And um, and I'm so proud of myself today because that decision not to go over that hill and to take that, that little shortcut, that was a big thing for me. Because that would never have happened at one time. And you know what? In hindsight, I'm so glad I made the decision I made. It was totally the right decision. I'd have still been walking now, trying to find a camping spot. It would have put hours on me day. Um, you know, and even with that shortcut, I've still fallen well behind where I should be. And I'm fine with that. And the reason I fell behind so much... It's because I've just been enjoying it. I've been enjoying nature. You know, I've been... I sat down by the side of some river before and got the pipe out. And I stayed there for about an hour, chilling out. And then later on, I found another little river. And I did exactly the same again. I took my shoes off, went in the water, did a bit of grounding, and just lay there with my eyes shut. The sun was beautiful. And all the time, I've still got this naggling little thing in my head saying, come on, come on, you're falling behind, you're falling behind. And I really have to fight against that. And I think I'm now getting to the point of my life where I'm comfortable to 
to just chill and just to just to let it be. And you know, I, it's it's set, it took me a long time to get out of that mindset of uh, you know task orientated. That's a military thing, that you know. And like before, I was beasting myself up somehow with me pack on my back. And I thought, you know what? I avoided the Brecon Beacons for a good 30 years because it held bad memories for me, for my army days. I mean, I, I got hypothermia at Brecon Beacons. I, I, every time I was down in the Brecon Beacons, we were getting beasted up and down hills or it, there was some discomfort going on. And I thought, this is 30 years later now, why am I still putting myself in a position of discomfort when I'm in such a beautiful place, just enjoy, just enjoy, you know. And I thought, sack it, sack the blooming 48 mile hike, or 45, because I'd cut that hill out. And I thought, just enjoy it, and just, just, just bimble, just ramble, you know. So I think the whole theme of this, this little expedition is going to be one of my favourite quotes, which Stu's having a tattoo, on his tattoo, uh, not all who wonder are lost, and I'm going to just wonder. I'm going to just wonder now. And I'm not lost because I've got my map if I need it, but I'm just going to wonder for a few days, and I'm just going to see where I end up. I don't have to be here by such a time, or I don't have to be at this place, because if I don't get to there, then I'll struggle the next day making the next leg. And it's all right to do nothing. It's all right to just relax and just to, to be, you know, and especially in nature. You know, it took me a long time learning that. And even Scotland's my favourite country. But it's probably only when I went up in the camper van the other month that I've just totally embraced it for what it is without there being any hardship. Every time I've been before that, I've had the beauty of it, but it's come on the back of a 20-odd day hike or there's been some hardship or a full day doing 40, 50 mile on a push bike with all your, your camping gear. It's come with some hardship attached to it. Well, this time it, it was just totally embracing nature and just being free and not having an agenda. Or if you have an agenda, change the agenda if it, if it doesn't fit what, what you want, you know. And um, I don't know, I'm 54. I think I'm growing up a bit, finally. You know, I've, I've loved today, and I've got camped up nice and early. I could have pushed on for a few more hours and got to the top of that hill and probably had a, a, a very uncomfortable night because it would have been windy. I'd have probably, my feet would have probably been battered. Um, but yeah, that's it. I mean, basically, I'm just going to embrace nature more and not so much push myself with targets that you know, are increasingly becoming unachievable as I'm getting older. I mean, today, I've loved it, but I felt it, you know what I mean? And even taking my time and falling way behind where I should have really been, I've still found it hard. You know, so tomorrow, I'm going to crack on, and I might do half the distance I've done today and just do more sat by rivers and hugging trees and all that, whatever, whatever I want to do. You know, or whatever I want to do. It's beautiful. The weather's glorious. I'm in a beautiful place. You know. Doesn't all have to be about targets, does it? And blooming getting somewhere. Anyway, I'm going to finish off my pipe, finish my brew, and just let it go dark and just enjoy. You know, I sat there before watching some paragliders for about an hour, just going round. And then a glider came over. And then when I was talking to that guy, there was two little moles that came out and they were just messing about near us. They weren't even bothered we were there and we were just stayed still watching them. And it's little things like that you'd miss if you were just constantly go, 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 go. You know, so I'm going to start doing more stopping and opening my eyes and just checking it in what I'm seeing, you know life's short and you can get out into places and actually not appreciate it because you've got too many other little agendas going on in your head. Rant over. Going to have a nice night tonight. Chill out. Got a few whiskies. I'm going to have a few whiskies in a bit. And then uh, I don't think I'll have a fire. I don't want to draw any attention to myself. 
and then I'll go to bed, get up tomorrow, and I will go and ramble off and we'll see where I end up. Watch this space. You just can't beat cooking by a babbling brook. Second day of this, and um, the boot that I've been following, it's not actually on any uh, footpaths to climb that hill, so I've just been climbing over what we call baby's heads in the army. And um, it's hard going, so the decision to stay in that forest last night was definitely the right one. Looking back down to the forestry block where I slept last night, that right hand edge as we're looking at it. Uh, and I've come all the way up here. And I'm heading this way, like I said, there's no footpaths. I'm just basically following the blue dot on the app uh, to try and get to my next spot. So, needless to say, nobody anywhere, not seeing absolutely anyone. I think I can see a few little dots on top of that hill over there. Um, but apart from that, I've not seen another soul. Yes, yes, it's not a mirage. I've seen Penny Fan again, that's the direction I'm heading. Oh my God, this has been an absolute killer. I said I was going to take it easy today, but I've got no choice. Uh, I've come from that direction and literally it's just all bog and baby's head. It's not even on a path, there's nothing. I'm literally just heading for the high point here. Uh, so I'm going up in about a mile. I'll get to the very top of that ridge, Fan 4. And from there, I'm going to drop down. I'm going to drop down to the Story Arms, back to my car. And then I'm going to go to Talibont and check it out for a, a wild camping spot tonight. I'm averaging about one mile an hour. It's took me absolutely ages to do this. Um, so yeah, once I get to Fan 4, I'll get another video. I'll drop down and... I'm ready for Taliban tonight for a wild camp. Well, on the way to Taliban Reservoir, I realised I wasn't that far away from Abba Fan. And I've always wanted to come here and pay, pay my respects to the 116 primary school kids and 28 adults who died in the Abba Fan disaster. And it's shocking walking around here. I just didn't realise. I didn't realise there was 116 children killed in that. Just been walking. 21st of October 1966. You know, Sandra, nine years old. Seven years old. 10 years old, 8 years old, oh man, it's absolutely shocking, and what an absolutely beautiful memorial place this is, a, a, well, this is where they're buried. I couldn't come down this part of the neck of the woods without coming and, and paying my respects to, to these kids and adults who died on that day. I've just done a quick Google search and found the actual spot of the school and it's now um, a memorial garden. Pantaglass Junior School. And this is um, this is where the school was. So the cold slag heap would have been up there somewhere. It's crazy, isn't it? One of the world's biggest disasters happened here. It had to be done. It just had to be done. Uh, right, I went wrecking Taliban Reservoir. You have got absolutely no chance of wild camping that. The signs everywhere. 
Uh, it, didn't, it didn't actually look that good anyway. So I'm now heading north to hopefully find something heading north. But if I don't find anything, I will be just heading home, I'm afraid. So if I do find some work, you will uh, see it on here. And if I don't, it's adios.